All right. If you have your Bibles, turn to St. Matthew, the eighth chapter. You can have fun in, in, in the assembly. You can have fun in church. We don't have to follow anybody's protocol or model based on another church that you may have attended. You may have seen how they do things, but you're in the house of the Lord. We're here in a place that people have prayed throughout the years for an open heaven, meaning that you are free to operate in the anointing. That means the presence of God to do what he wants done. And the Bible says to enter into his gates with thanksgiving, enter, enter into his courts with praise. So that means the same way that we can yell and scream at a basketball game or soccer game or baseball game, we can use that energy. We can use that drive to give God praise in this place. I know some of you are very professional people. I know many of you are knowledgeable people. You're high class people, people of integrity. Oh, but when you get in this house, huh, it's okay to break out, huh? Have you ever went, to, went home and nobody's there? You're just in your house, turn the radio up real good and begin to dance a little bit and get your wife or your partner or your brothers and sisters, y'all just dancing, you know, just having a good time. Same way you can have in the house of the Lord. The Spirit of God wants you to praise him. The Spirit of God wants you to dance. The Spirit of God wants you to praise his name because he, in his presence is what? Fullness of joy. Oh, he don't like nothing dead. Oh, no, the dead need to be buried. Hallelujah. And if you're dead, we can, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can resurrect you, hallelujah, by the power of the Holy Ghost. All right. So let's look at verses uh, 21 through 22. And I want to focus on 21 and 22, um, but a lot of times what I, in Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 8, uh, verses 21 and 22. I may read above it, but in my reading above it, I'm just wanting to get you in the groove of reading the scripture with me until we hit that 21 and 22 uh, verses. But in those other scriptures above there, he's talking and, and, and addressing some other different things. Okay? So just, just, so just, just go with me on this. I'm going to start with 14, and then we're going to go down to 21 and 22. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left, and she arose and ministered unto them. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus saith unto him, The foxes have holes. And the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And I know that scripture gets put out of context sometimes, but we can't, we're not going to focus on that scripture today. And another of his disciples said unto him, and another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury the dead bury their dead. <clears throat> I would like to focus on verse 22. And you don't have to look at the scripture, but just look at your neighbor. Oh, yes. Look at him real good. Yes, yeah, squint at him if you have to. And repeat after me. Jesus said, follow me and let the dead Bury their dead. Oh, yes. I want to focus on if it's dead, it's dead. I said if it's dead, it's dead. I said if it's dead, it's dead. Oh, hallelujah. All right, I got some things I want to read and share with you. 
And I want to just kind of take my time, let it marinate because it's not a long message. Is that all right? Oh, yeah. Y'all repeat, I'm feeling good. Somebody say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. All right, Jesus' response to his disciple appeared to be a bit harsh, don't you think? Appeared to be harsh. Not letting a man be at the burial of his dad seems a bit cruel, doesn't it? Jesus, I want to follow you. But I, have, um, but I have my father, and, 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 and my father is dead, and I want to uh, pay my respects, and I want to be with him. And then Jesus looks at him and says, well, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. That's kind of curt. That's kind of sharp. My goodness. It appears to contradict the Bible as far as honor because Jesus said, and the, and, the, and the word says, it's Jesus, the word says to honor your father. And honor your mother. And even though your mother or your father may have passed, but you still want to be there to honor them because you are the fruit of, of, their, life, of their life and their lifestyle. And though he delayed, he went to see Lazarus. Remember that? He went to see Lazarus. Lazarus passed away. And Jesus delayed, but he still went. And when he went, uh, something else happened. Lazarus was raised from the dead. He messed up everything. I love Jesus at a funeral. Hallelujah. Because he'll shake up and wake up everything. But Jesus himself practiced honor. Jesus himself went to a a burial. So if Jesus is saying that and living that and that's his lifestyle, it seems a bit of a contradiction. Um, The disciple, though, was not making funeral arrangements, but rather desiring to return home to live with his aging father until his father passed away. So in that custom, and that was a custom then, if your, if your dad or your mom is aged quite a bit, then a lot of times they want to live there with them and be there with them until they're passing, okay? So that was that custom then. So he wasn't already uh, dead or, or passed away. He was just very, he was just very old, okay? And so the disciple came to Jesus saying, well, can I just, you know, put everything, put this ministry, put your work, put, ever, put all the things that you want me to do to the side for now. And I'm going to spend some time and spend time with my aging father. And then when he passes away, I'm good. I'm ready. Well, the problem is Jesus' ministry was only three and a half years. So spending time with his, his father may have outlived Jesus' ministry. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So if you're going to sit there and he's aged, but I've seen people who, um, who, who are aged, but they, they, they walk around better than we do. And so he's spending, he wants to spend time with his aged father. I've seen pe- people who have been uh, bedridden, and they've been bedridden for a long time, for years. So, so when he's coming to Jesus asking him uh, put everything to the side so I can spend time with him. Jesus, led by the Holy Ghost, got, got, has intuition, not in, just intuition, but insight, excuse me, on what's going on. He said, no, let the dead bury their dead and follow me. And what I want to minister to you today is there's some dead things in your life. There's some dead things that you're into. Uh, Just follow Jesus and let the dead bury the dead. What do I mean by this? It means that let those who are stuck, let those people who are entrenched, boxed in, and those people who settle with the natural routine, let them deal with that. I'm going to repeat it so it can sink in. Let those people or situations that are stuck, entrenched, boxed in, or those people who settle for the natural routines of life, let those people deal with that. Because God has a higher purpose that involves a deeper commitment to follow him. I'm going to repeat that. Just let it settle in. 
because you have a higher purpose. Somebody say higher purpose. You have a higher purpose that involves a deeper commitment. Say deeper commitment. If you're going to follow Christ, if you're going to follow the Lord. So let the dead bury the dead. Now, in thinking about this, I wanted to define and look up the word dead. I looked up several different words in the Greek and wanting to know which words should I highlight when ministering to you. The first word was dead. Well, not the first word that was highlighted to me to speak to you was the word dead. And in looking up the, um, the, the Greek and looking up the concordance and looking up the parallel Bibles and looking up all types of, of different definitions and sentence structures of what dead could be, I found out that basically, literally and figuratively, figuratively uh, dead means dead. That's what it means. Dead means dead. It means no longer alive, passed on, expired, departed. I like this word, gone. <laughs> no more. Unproductive, won't produce, and lifeless. It's time to deal with the dead things in our lives. Dead words. Dead mindsets. Brace yourself. Dead relationships. Dead careers. Dead endeavors. Dead just is dead, and dead means dead. We need to cut off the things that are dead. Got some dead things I want to share with you today. Dead weight. Look at somebody and say dead weight. Oh, my goodness. Dead weight. The weight of an inert person or thing. A heavy and oppressive burden. Think about it. Those burdens that you have in your life that are unnecessary, that you're carrying, that's dead weight. I was with, uh, was with um, Pastor Annie one day, and, and I think um, he was talking about our apostle that have lost some weight. And he's, he's looking good. Apostle's looking good, looking real good. But he had, he said, apostle um, lost 10 pounds. And he... Um, and we had, I don't know whose it was, I don't know if it was Mr. Vernon's or Mr. Danny's or, or Apostle Sledgehammer. And that sledgehammer was pretty heavy. And the weight of that um, sledgehammer was 10, 10 pounds. It's amazing that when the weight is off of you and then you pick that weight up, you, you can see how heavy that weight actually is. So a lot of times we are going through life with dead weight, emotionally, dead weight in our minds, dead weight in our thoughts, dead weight in our relationship. And it's time to cut off the dead weight. It's time to cut off the dead weight. It's time to cut off that dead weight. Those things that you're holding on to, that's weighing you down. Those things need to go. Because God wants you to soar. He wants you to reign as a king in life. But in order for you to fly high, you got to get rid of the dead weight. That weight got to go. It's going to take some courage. It's going to take a little discipline. It's going to take some grit. And since we're in Georgia, you're gonna, it's going to take some hunkering down. But we need to let go of that weight all those sins in the way that easily besets us, easily distract us, easily gets us down, easily gets us depressed, easily gets us heartache, easily gets us moved. We're going to have to let those things go. I don't care if it's people approval, people addiction, fear people or whatever. It's time to let those things go. Never let a man, never let a woman stop you from going the direction that God wants you to go. He wants you to fly high. And a lot of times the people have passed in our life, but because we still want to please them, we still bow down to everything, to their will and their desires and their emotions instead of moving in the direction that God wants you to go. It's time to get rid of the dead weight. Oh yeah, got some more. The problem with carrying dead weight for a long period of time is that it affects your posture. And it affects your walk. I know a lot of times when, when, uh, 
when babe, my baby girl, I got all kinds of nicknames for her. I call her Coco right now. Coco. When Coco was going to, going to school, she would have a book bag. And those book bags would be so heavy. Got books in them. Now, the book bag was strong. But it was so much weight on the book bag that when you walk, you go, you go, it, it changes your posture. And some of you have students and, students and children that, that heavy, hold heavy bags. And after a long period of time, it begins to affect their spine. It begins to affect their back. It begins to affect their muscles. It begins to affect their nerves. Well, the same thing is with us. When we carry heavy burdens, it begins to affect our posture. And you can tell when our posture is effective because, uh, is effective because sometimes we get bent down. And, and, and it seems like life sometimes bends us down and it weighs us down to the point that our walk is being affected. That means when, when, the, when the time to praise God is here, when the time if you're in the assembly, when you're in the house and it's time to let everything go, you don't did your business meetings, you done clocked in, you done clocked out, you done dressed up, you done put your smell good on, get eaten, you're drinking, you did all those things and I come to meet God at his house. I came to meet God in the assembly. I am his house, but I came to meet God in the assembly. And when the praises go up, it seems like it's a burden just to lift your hands. Seems like it's a burden just to move and say, God, I love you. God, I adore you. Sometimes it's a burden just to move your feet because pride is, pride is setting in. I don't want nobody to see that I'm moving. I'm a little heavy, and if I get to jump in my belly, gonna mo belly gonna roll. Watch that belly roll. <laughs> Watch the belly roll. And I don't want to move it. I don't want to move my hands. I want to, I want to, I want to be somebody that I want to look pretty or I want to look tough. And I, and, and, no, no, no. Those images leave when you're in the house of God. Those images leave when you're in the presence of God. He wants to get rid of that dead weight. It begins to affect your walk. As the pastor was saying earlier, your attitude. Waking up on the wrong side of the bed. I'm not even going to get into this, what side you, <laughs> is the wrong side. But we wake up mean, go to bed mean, go to work hateful, go to work rebellious, huh? Um, go home, don't want to talk to mama, don't want to talk to daddy. You know, don't want, if somebody um, pulls out in front of you, you want to cuss them out. Want to follow them. Stop and cuss them out. <laughs> huh? Oh, we in Georgia, we yeah. We in Georgia, we, the South, they know how to cuss real good. Now, I've heard some words, my goodness, that, I, that, that, that shocked me. I didn't even know those words existed when it come down to cussing. And it's amazing, though, when you have the wrong attitude, how those things happen. I can smile at you and say, brother, it's good to see you, good to love you. And time I get in the car, oh, man, I can't stand this, and I can't stand that, and I can't stand him, and I can't stand her, and I can't stand this. It begins to affect our walk because we're going to church and we're spending time with church, but we don't exercise or practice those things that God wants us to do. And better yet, as you said earlier, how we, what we do in private, it'll show up publicly. So if we don't spend time with God privately, how we interact and how we do things begins to show publicly. So in, the presence, in the God's presence, there's fullness of joy. In God's presence, if we spend time, and when we spend time in God's presence, it begins to affect our walk. It begins to affect our posture. And if you have a good attitude, then your faith is lifted up because you're hearing. You're wanting to hear. If you got a good attitude, I'm going to hear what the Word of God has to say. Faith coming by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word of God, and once faith is, faith is activated, it will begin to turn things in our life when we have good posture, when we have a good walk. So those dead weights have to go. Dead things don't go anywhere. Most people put dead things in a box. You know, a coffin holds dead things. We're in relationships that box us in. Oh, I'm preaching right there. I'll repeat that to the light. Relationships, sometimes we're in dead relationships, and those relationships box us in, just like a coffin. Our mindset, dead mindset, is like a coffin. It'll box you in, and it'll hold you in. The image of how you see yourself, it'll box you in. The words of past relatives, they'll box you in. Words from your coworkers, they'll box you in. 
Words from a spouse, they'll box you in. Words from the world that says if you, if, that if you're not looking this way or if, you're, or if your hair's not this way or if you're not this size or if you don't look this way or if you don't have this much money, this is who you are. The devil is a liar. You are better than that. You are greater than that because you're made in the image and likeness of God himself. Break out the casket. Break out the mold. Break out the things that the devil wants to put on you and break out and into what God wants you to be into and the person that God wants you to be. And, and sometimes when you break out of things, what? It gets messy. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's better just to get messy. Sometimes it's just good just to mess stuff up. Mess stuff up just for the sake of just messing stuff up in a good way. Just mess it up. Change the routine. Change the routine. How you interact with your friends, say something different to them. Say something insightful. Say something that will cause them to think. I know a friend of mine a long time ago, um, he used to come to me and he, he would say, T, how you doing? And then I said, I'm good. I'm sh shake your hand. I shake didn't say, he said, I'm good. And then, he look, and then he'll hold my hand and then he'll look at me real good and say, now how you really feeling? Huh? Huh? Because a lot of times we rehearse. The same words over and over and over again. Just as fake as artificial fruit. And that's one of the things that keep us in a box. Tell somebody, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored right now. I'm kind of pissed off right now. <laughs> yeah, I got some things going on in my life that I'm, on, I'm going to address. I'm going to address it in the name of the Lord. But I got a righteous anger. I don't feel, I don't feel like chopping it up real good. I don't feel like saying anything fake or something fruity right now. Now, I got some things on my mind. Let's get in the Word of God and talk about it. If you don't want to talk about this, shut up and leave me alone. But I'm ready to do something. I'm ready to change the mold. I'm ready to change anything. Park your car different. Do, do something that changes, that changes your mindset. I like when Apostle Tara Murphy came here. He said sometimes he don't even go to work the same route. He changes it up. Because sometimes you'll lull yourself to sleep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. I tell a lot of people at the job that, at the job that I work at, I said, I'm so glad that I'm in the family that I'm in, biological as well as church family. I said, because I don't have the same, I don't have the same, um, I don't have the same information all the time. I said, I, I fellowship with older people. I fellowship with younger people and all their advice is valuable. I fellowship with white people. I fellowship with black people. I fellowship with Hispanic people. I fellowship with Korean people. I fellowship with all types of people. And if you know, and if you know the history of my family, there's a whole bunch of different folk in there. But I fellowship with them. Why? Because if I get information from somebody who always looks like me and always does everything that I do, how can I change? It's time for us to expand our horizons by not being afraid and deal with somebody that's different than us. Deal with somebody that will challenge you. Deal with somebody that when you want to do that old talk game, uh, what you saying? What, what you really say? What's really going on with you? That's what we need. And God provides us a body of people that we can interact with that can help us to know where we're at in our thought process. That are we doing the same thing over again? And they will challenge us to change our viewpoints. The world always wants to segregate us. The world always wants to have us apart. The world always wants us to focus on what's different instead of what's in common. Jesus Christ is what's in common. The Holy Spirit is what's in common. The blood of Jesus is what's in common. Casting out demons ought to be what's in common. Oh, hallelujah. Woo, glory. All right, let's go. Have you ever heard of a dead end road? I'm talking to you. Have you ever heard of a dead end road? We're still talking about dead things need to go. Follow Jesus and let the dead bury the dead. Have you ever went down a dead end road? What does a dead end road do? It leads you nowhere. Leads you nowhere. We, our family has a movie that we watch. That we watch. And when we see something over again, it's, it's, a, it's Chevy Chase um, European Vacation. And they, were, they was in Europe, and then every time they would pass, he said, he said that's Big Ben, y'all. And go around again, it was that morning, that's Big Ben, y'all. 
that kept the movie kept going till there was nighttime. That's Big Ben, y'all. You kept going in circles and circles and circles and circles, wasting gas, and you're not going anywhere. Moving around, and we're not going anywhere. And on your inner relationship, that's not going anywhere, and you know it's dead. You need to clip that thing. In a career that's not going anywhere, don't don't quit your job just yet. Don't quit it just yet. But transition, transition into what God has you to do. There have been doctors that have left to be carpenters because that was their passion. You have people that have changed careers that have done things. You have people, you got people, 80 some years old, jumping on bungee cords. Huh? They did something different. The mold that people want to set them in, they won't set them in, and they begin to make progress. In a dead end, it's like a hamster or a gerbil in that spinning thing. You're exerting a whole lot of energy, but you're not going anywhere. Is there any dead things in your life that you can visualize to say, I'm going in circles in this area of my life? I'm going in circles, and I need to get off. I want to get off this train. I want to get off this ride because it's unproductive, it's fruitless, and it's doing nothing, and I need to change. I need to shift. I need to transition into a different way of thinking, and then the different way of think, thinking will produce a different attitude, and a different attitude builds up my faith, and I can have different results. Let's transition. Let's, let's shift. Got some more dead things. Dead things are indifferent. Dead things don't respond. Entering the states with thanksgiving, entering this course with praise. Dead things are indifferent. I can go to a graveyard today and just dance all around the graveyard. Ain't nobody moving. <laughs> Ain't nobody responding with me. Ain't nobody getting with me. Why? They're indifferent. They're in a different place. The bodies may be there, but they're in a different place. A lot of times, God wants to do something with us, but we're in a different place. Our mindset is not in the same, the same wavelength that he's in. Our mindset hasn't conformed. It's still trapped in the world and it hasn't conformed to the word of God. So we're in a different place. He came to Adam and said, where are you? We're different. But when the, when the word of God goes forth and when the praises of God goes forth, we shouldn't be indifferent. We should be quick, quick to lift up our hands. Men and women. It's amazing in the Bible how David danced before the Lord, how David was singing to God. You know, but, you know in our day, we look like, David, man, you're kind of soft, man. You know, you, you kind of, you know, you're up here dancing before the Lord and dancing out your clothes, and you're kind of a pretty boy, you know. He said it was ruddy. He looked real good. You know, the ladies liked him, Miss T. The ladies liked him. You're a pretty boy. Man, David will kill you in a heartbeat. <laughs> David will go off on you. <laughs> hey, how we say, don't let the smooth taste fool you. David will go off on you real quick. And that's the way we should be. We should be passionate about the Lord, loving the Lord, worshiping the Lord, lifting our voice. And that's not all of it. That's not all that we do because we ought to have a foundation of reading the word and spending time with God in our personal time. But in an assembly, when we're all together, when the remnant and all the assemblies come together, there ought to be a roar, there ought to be a shout, there ought to be dancing, there ought to be praising. Why? Because the Spirit of God is here. The Word of the Lord is here. And we've been out there facing obstacles and, and, and obtaining victory day after day after day, and we can come in and, and praise God with one another. We shouldn't be indifferent to the things of God. And even if you're not in the assembly, you shouldn't be indifferent to the things of God. If God, if God shows you something at your workplace, work with it. If God shows you something in your home, work with it. I'm going to say this about Vi, and then I'm going to say, and then I'm going to leave him alone. Yesterday, we were just sitting there talking because the, the, um, because the ladies had a day out. They, they did what they wanted to do. And we was there, and we were just talking. He said, uh, he said oh, you know, listen now. He said, if, I, if I'm with you, I'm with you. You know, we, we, we watch, a little, watch a little superhero movie. You, I, got, I got to get my superhero movies in. But he said, oh, now, if you want to pray, if you want to worship, let's go. See, even at your house, 
It ought to be a saying. It ought to be a, hey, let's praise. Let's worship God in the house. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I love everybody, but I'm not focused on everybody else's blessing. Right? I'm focused on Christ in me, the hope of glory. I, I want to I wanna, I wanna, I wanna see God. I just don't want to hear what God was doing with everybody else, but I want to see and I want to experience God doing something for me, in me. I'm not, I don't want to have to be the, I don't want to be the one that, 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 that just watching on the sidelines, I want to experience what God has for me. Dead things stink. Yeah. Yeah. The odor is foul, nauseating, and distasteful. Sometimes when you smell something, a lot of guys spit, they you smell, Ew. because it gets in their mouth, it gets in their taste buds. It reeks and it's obvious. There's some obvious dead things that's in our life. If we stay there too long, we don't smell it anymore. Don't let me go there. Might as well. <laughs> You um, flagellate, let's just use that word. You flagellate. And you in the room and your, and your daughter or your son or some relative or friend come in and say, my God, man. <laughs> what really going on here? You sick? <laughs> Something wrong with you? And they're spraying around. But you're like saying, well, that, that happened about two minutes ago. <laughs> but because you're in the room, you're used to it. You're used to the stink, and it doesn't affect you, but it affects the people around you, the people in contact with you. There's some obvious things in our life that stinks, but we've been messing around and hee-hawing around with that thing so long that we don't see it anymore. Huh? And that's a dangerous thing. We keep messing around with it, playing around with it. We don't see it, but to everybody else, it's very obvious, and it needs to be dealt with. Sometimes, in order to see it, or order to detect it, sometimes uh, with you flagella, you have to go out the room, go outside, get some fresh air. And then when you come back in, you say, ooh, that did, that did, that did hurt, that did, my God. And sometimes, so that what we need is, is time with the Holy Ghost, time with the Lord, that he'll give us a, a fresh wind, he'll give us a fresh breeze. So then when we come back and look at ourselves, we're gonna say, oh yeah, that, 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 that stinks right there. I need to deal with that thing in my life. It's obvious. It hurts. But those things need to change. And the only way to do that is by following, following the Lord Jesus. And when I mean by following the Lord Jesus, that means following his word and follow what his word says and practice the things that the word says and then go with the master teacher, the Holy Spirit, to teach you and give you an understanding of the Bible so you can practice that word effectively. And as you practice the word effectively in the way supposed and soundly, you'll get sound and effective results. Okay. A uh, couple more things. Dead things bring flies and maggots. You, have you ever attracted people and things that cause chaos? Like a fly. People in your life, that's annoying. Every time you're about to get, do something good, they land, right, they land right on you, land right around you. Dead things, flies, maggots, they produce death. In, and that, especially with relationships, you're in a relationship with people, tail bearers, people that go out, come in, go out, come in. I always got some fresh news, I always got something to entail. Always something negative. It's like a fly when, it's, when, it, when it lands on something dead. The bacteria and the death that's on it, it tracks it. It walks all in it and then it flies around and then it lands on something else. It contaminates something else. Do you have any flies in your life? Do you have any maggots in your life? People that's wanting just to eat off the chaos that's in your life. People that won't tell you the things that you need to hear, but people just tell you the things that you want to hear. People that won't give you the word of God, but just give you gossip. People that won't give you things to uplift you. People that will, that will down you. People who won't roll with the vision, but roll against the vision. Do you have any flies? Do you have any maggots? If so, you need to clip them. Put them on the side of the road. Let the city deal with it. Let's get them. Take them. Let's get up out of here. That's what we need to do. Investigate our life. Where are the maggots? I know she's pretty, but she a maggot. Huh? I know, she's, I know he's attractive, but he's a maggot. He never uplifts you. He always takes, you, takes from you and never gives to you. 
fly, maggot. And I ain't talking about telling somebody you'll fly or you'll maggot, but I'm talking about the character. I'm talking about the spirit that influences the person to behave in such a way. So I'm not saying to down anybody, but what I'm saying is that to identify what's operating in that individual. If you're a fly or you're a maggot, yes, I love you, but we can't, jihad, we can't roll together because you're detrimental to my walk with God. And if you're detrimental to my walk with God, I'm going to take that same, like you said, perfume, as, as we interact together, I'm going to take that same thing and I'm going to bring it to my house. I'm going to bring it to my children. Oh, no, I won't. Yes, you will. You're bringing it to your children. You're bringing it to your children's children. Why are they behaving all crazy? Because you're dealing with folk that's crazy. And you won't, de- and you won't stop dealing with them. And, and, and you won't stop dealing with that. So that is bleeding into you. And it's bleeding into everybody else. We got uh, at work, we have a, a, a lady, beautiful lady, beautiful lady. She has, uh, she, she's, she's pregnant. She's like Miss Courtney. She like Miss Courtney, and uh, and what we do at that office, we protect her. We make sure nothing stress her. Well, I can do it. Nah, you can sit down, sit down, deal with some paperwork, deal out, get some phones or whatever. You can't do what you're used to doing right now because you have you have maybe the next president, you have the next Billy Graham, you have the next David Coker. We we you sit at go nowhere. She has come to appreciate that now because we look, at, look after her so because, listen, all the stress that she be- bears, all the uncomfortableness that she feels, who does it go to? The baby. It feeds the what? The baby. A lot of times when we're dealing with people, it affects our house. It affects our people. Come home mad from work. Why say, hey, baby, how you doing? It affects the household. So those things, so any relationships that's dead, any relationship that distracts from the word, clip it. Look at somebody. You, please put your finger, your hand up. Please, just appease me. Turn it this way. Clip them folk. Clip them. Clip them. Listen, I know if you cut something that's attached to you, will it hurt? Yes. If you clip something that's attached to you, will it hurt? Yes. But you'll heal. You'll heal if, you go, if, 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 if you're being nurtured and cared for by the right person. And that person is God. And that person is the Word of God. That person is the Holy Spirit. That person is a friend that, that loves you unconditionally, that, that appropriates the Word of God in your relationship. That person will help you to heal. So clip them. Put on your big man pants or your big woman pants and clip them. It's going to hurt, but that's what we're here for. You got brothers and sisters here that will help you if you reach out and say, I'm hurting. It's okay to say, I'm hurting. It's okay to say, I'm not feeling it right now. I would like your help. I would like your support. Like somebody just to talk to or to pray with me. I ain't going to take all your time. I just want somebody to smile at me. Do you know you may be looking at somebody today that they have gone through the whole week and nobody has smiled in their face. Nobody has given them a kind word. Nobody wanted to respect them. That's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with. So clip all the dead things. Dead things bring disease. I'm about finished, y'all. Dead things um, brings disease. I know the Bible for punishment in some areas for a crime, especially I think with, with, with murder, um, a dead person will be connected to you. And as that dead person will be connected to you, they will begin to rot. So I murdered somebody and now I have this person on me. And that person will begin to rot and begin to stink and it begins to fester. And all those things, and you know there's flies and you know there's maggots. And all those things and disease begin to come in and all those things begin to saturate from the dead person into the person that, that's carrying that person. Are you carrying some dead weight? Are you carrying emotional baggage that's eating through you? 
It doesn't have to be an actual relationship that's present now. It's resentment of things that happened in times past. It may be somebody that has left you a long time ago. I'm about to touch a sensitive area here, but I think the Lord will minister to you. In, 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 in identifying that, people who have hurt you emotionally, people who have hurt you physically, even sexually, they may have hurt you really bad. And it's beginning to eat through you and eat away at you. We have to cut the dead weight. We have to cut the dead weight. Was not your fault. Was not your fault. Was not your fault. And people will say, well, how God, why would God, uh, how, how did this happen? What, what came about? I didn't know, I did, did I do it? No, you didn't do anything wrong. And the devil is a devil and the devil is a liar. And he's going to pay, for, he's going to pay for everything that he has ever done to any one of God's people. He's going to pay. He's going to pay severely. But until that time comes, he said, I got the healer here. I got the healer here. I'm not going to leave you in that condition. And I know you didn't ask for it. I know you didn't do something to receive it. But I have somebody here. Just stretch out to him. And as he stretched out, as you stretch out to him, he'll stretch out to you and heal those things within your life. But if that so happened to be a relationship that you're in, deal with it the way God wants you to deal with it. Dead things need to be buried. I said dead things need to be buried. I said dead things need to be buried. How would it look? If I, if, if, if I, if I passed away and Nessa would have me stuffed <laughs> and have me in the house, <laughs> I look <at> like that. <laughs> kind of mess is that? <laughs> I can see Linda and that's that girl. <laughs> you all right? <laughs> it's apparently that you're not all right. <laughs> you need some milk. <laughs> girl, you need some help. <laughs> Dead things need to be buried because, me, because the real me is not there. It's just a shell of who I am, Okay. That's all. Those dead things need to be buried. And in our life, those dead things need to be buried. And last but not least, well, last but not least as far as the death part, dead things need to remain dead. Unless Jesus wants you to resurrect it, dead things need to remain dead. Close the door on that situation. Close the door on that mindset. Close the door on that way of thinking. Close the door and don't be afraid to venture out into the new things that God has for you. We, uh, the prophet, um, prophet Lisa came down here and talked about a kingdom paradigm shift. A kingdom paradigm shift. We need to shift. We need to change some things. I remember when the prophet of this house began to speak, when you talk about a sunken place, that means you got to step out and get out of that place. That's why I like to say, ever since she said that, I always like to say, let's put them up. Put them down. Because, it, because in your praise, you begin to reach out to a whole different level. In your praise, you're saying, God, I believe you. God, I trust you. And I'm stepping out and I'm willing to do something that I'm not used to doing. Something out of, my, uh, out of the characterization of what I like to present. Because I'm stretching out and I'm believing you and I'm trusting you for change. For change. For change. That's why I like these seats like it is now. You can break out right there. We won't pay you no attention. You can just go ahead and have yourself, have yourself a good time. And then get yourself back in line and get, get on back in here. So the answer to this is that we need to follow Jesus. I'm going to give you one scripture for that and then that's it. And that's just a couple of pages uh, beyond that. That's Matthew 11. Take um, um, 29 and 30. Jesus said to take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. When you follow Jesus, when you follow his word, when you follow the Bible, when you practice what the Bible says, when, you begin, when you're baptized and filled with Holy Ghost, begin to pray in the language that God has given you to, forgive, to provide you revelation so you can understand what the Word is really saying so it will build your faith and you can stand on it so your mountains and your dilemmas and your burdens can be removed. Those are the things that we do when we're following Jesus. And as we, and as we follow Jesus, 
Those things which are dead uh, will be turned back to life. John, in the Bible, St. John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. When we talk about dead things, we want life. We don't want death. We want life. In Jesus, there's life. In your born-again spirit, there is life. In that renewed mind, there is life. And as we spend time in the Word and praying in the Holy Ghost, life is produced. Life is produced. Life is produced. And you begin to see on a different level. You begin to hear on a different level. And we'll begin to go to the moon when we do those things that the Lord told us to do. The last thing is, last thing is this. Ezekiel says in 37, 1 through 4, what did it say? I know the preachers in the house know it. Can these dry bones live? Dead things in your life that need to be dead. Put them away. But as far as you, as far as your mindset is concerned, as far as the thing that God wants you to do, can I live again? God, I've gotten myself into a rut that I'm indifferent to the things of God. I'm indifferent to people. I'm indifferent to the word. I'm indifferent to everything. I'm not responding. I know I love you with all my heart, but I just can't lift up my hands no more. I'm tired. I'm tired of dealing with people. I'm tired of interacting with all types of people. I'm indifferent to them. I get up. I go home. I go to work and I go home. Get up, go to work, go home. Get up, go to work, go home. Sunday morning, I come to church. I'm all, it's like I'm dead. It's like I'm a zombie. There's no life. But if you can believe today, the word of the Lord, God is saying, listen here, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. Y'all stand up with me. Follow him. Let the dead bury the dead. You're going to a new dimension. You're going to a new level. You're going to a new place in your life, but you need to follow him. Cut off those dead things. Cut off those dead relationships. Cut off those dead habits. Cut off that dead time. Dead things take a lot of your time. Unproductive, unproductive. God wants to change that today. If you believe, if you're believing uh, that, that there's a change in your life, if you believe and you're striving for a change and you're willing to let the dead bury the dead and you're willing to follow Jesus if you would like to today the altar is open that you and what I'm saying is this it is a declaration of your faith saying the dead will bury the dead I'm not dealing with dead situations anymore I'm not trying to control things or people that I cannot control I'm moving forward in the word and I'm going to enjoy it all the way not going to be unproductive I'm going to move forward I'm going to have this kingdom dynamic shift in full operation if you're willing to declare that and wanting to declare that today the altar is open for you